Have you ever taken a look at your grandpappy's hunting rifle in 30-06 and thought, hmm, that could use more communism? Well, first of all, you deserve a helicopter ride because all communists do. Second of all, if you actually did that, it would look like this. What we're gonna be playing with today is the 30-06 Vepper. It is an AK platform rifle chambered in, you guessed it, nine millimeter. I'm f***ing with you, it's 30-06. It's a really cool rifle, it's the AK getting back to its Garand roots, I'll get into that later, but first, let's shoot this bad boy, because frankly, I haven't even shot it yet. Let's go take care of that. Now, if the setting that we're filming at today uh, looks a little bit familiar, that is because while we're looking for a new place to film our range videos, we are temporarily using Demolition Ranch for today's video. So don't worry, I text Matt about this. We have his permission to be here. He totally knows that we're out here filming right now. And remember that snitches get fucking stitches. Hashtag don't tell Matt. You know, it drives some women absolutely crazy that all it takes to make some men happy is a, a room like this and a lawn chair. They hate it. Ladies and gentlemen, the Molot Vepper 30-06. This is one of the many Russian-made AK-style rifles under the Vepper name. This one, I think, being, well, obviously being the biggest, being chambered in 30-06, which I believe to date is the biggest commercial caliber the AK has ever been chambered in. It's okay, baby. I know you're the biggest that was ever fired. I said produced in the title. Plus, we both know your new brother's gonna put it to shame. Peppers were a commercial import to the civilian market in the United States throughout the 2000s up until 2016, where at the Cincinnati Zoo, a gorilla by the name of Harambe was shot. The Russians, displeased by this a year later, disallowed the import of Vepers and other AK-style rifles into the United States. I'm fucking with you. The U.S. government, in its infinite wisdom and always knowing what's best for us, uh, decided to sanction the Russians uh, over the Ukraine-Russian conflict in 2017. Not the current one, they weren't prescient. This has been going on for a minute. But instead of punishing Russia in any meaningful way, it realistically just punished any American civilian who wanted a cool vepper. Me. It punished me. So if you think government sanctions suck big pee, pee then go ahead and subscribe, because uh, all of us think so too. All my homies hate the government. First thing to point out, this is not the original furniture that would have been on this Vepper. Um, I, I actually, I don't mind this furniture. It's not my favorite, but in my opinion, it is far superior to the uh, original furniture that the Veppers were imported with. I think Delance will probably have that up on the screen. Veppers are well-built rifles, but that just looks like shit. So we've got this very SVD looking furniture here. <clears throat> Ironically, the SVD I have in the shop uh, doesn't really have, well, I guess the stock is, yeah, stock is the same. It doesn't have the, the wood forend, but as you can see here, very much SVD inspiration here on the, uh, the wood butt stock. This is my Russian Tiger. Uh, this is a Russian civilian import of the uh, SVD platform. The one I did the video on back in the day is my NDM-86. That is a Chinese variant of the Dragunov SVD and actually is closer to the military SVD than the Russian import. There's a few noticeable differences, you know, lightning cuts and whatnot that just the civilian imports didn't have. This isn't an SVD video. I don't know why I'm going down this fucking autistic rabbit hole. Return. Cool. So anywho, magazines. Uh, so this is the standard capacity five round magazine. This is what they are imported with. But for those of us who want a little bit more than five rounds, uh, CS spec, I believe, CSS, CS spec, yeah, I think it's CS spec, uh, has 20 round magazines available. It quadruples your capacity, and in my experience, they seem to run pretty damn well. Uh, so it gets you up to 20 rounds, which is four times more than you would have with a factory round, but 10 less then YouTube gets mad at, so that's perfect. YouTube's gonna let me get money today, cool. 
almost enough to pay off this Vepr 30 out 6 because these things are fucking expensive. So they didn't really make a whole shitload of these, at least not uh, that I saw. I've been looking to get my hands on one of these for over a year now. I've, I've actively been looking on Gunbroker and Arms List and a couple other places. And the ones that I found were either stupid priced or just they, they just weren't around. There were none for sale. And then I found this one, picked it up, and uh, it's mine now. I'll treasure it always. <laughs> So basic manual of arms, uh, this operates completely like an AK. I'm gonna go over that real quick. So selector here, we have uh, safe, down is semi-auto. Our magazine catch here, you just push forward and rock the magazine out. Show clear, obviously gun was cleared beforehand, but you know, it doesn't hurt to be safe. Trigger is a, actually I believe it's a two-stage trigger because I can pull it and I get to a second wall and then a clean break. Not a big fan of two-stage triggers personally, but if you are, go buy a Vepr. No, wait. So basically, if you know how to operate an AK, you can pick one of these up and be right at home. ADD break. So we're time for our typical white claw penetration test. So we've got a couple of white claws here that, uh, it, well, don't worry about that. That's coming later. Uh, we've got a couple white claws here. We're gonna show you the power of 30-06 by lining them up in a line, basically just showing you the amount of energy being transferred through all the cans. First off, I gotta set this table back up. I don't know what Matt's filming out here, by the way, but this looks like a grisly murder. I'm not one to judge him. This really does look like blood. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I don't know how it comes, comes across on camera, but this looks like he's up to some Dahmer shit, uh, which, hey, like I said, snitches get stitches, so I'm, you know, fucking off. So we've got our five claws in a line. Let's see how they fare against the AK-30-06. Taking a shower reserved for an alcoholic white girl in three, two, one. You know, I don't think I'll ever quite get over how good that smells. So we're helping clean off a lot of the blood here. You're welcome, Matt. Got some of the claws over here, completely just blown to shit. These cans are completely eviscerated. I mean, a lot of times we'll have puncture holes or even, you know, cans blown in half and whatnot, but these are ripped to shreds in a mighty powerful way. Like it flattens the tops and the bottoms. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. Over here by our tactical llama, we have some of the other pieces. Again, these are probably the, the latter chunks. You actually see bits of shrapnel, probably just the jacket and whatnot, just coming off of it and coming apart. Uh, that was the crazy part too, is that this, was, uh, this wasn't even like a hollow point or anything that's supposed to have any sort of uh, crazy expansion. This is just full metal jacket. I, uh, this, this might actually be a murder scene. As you can see, it's kind of been a goal of mine for a few years now to have one of every AK variant, or at least you know the highlights. And uh, well, I'm on my way. But you know, the collection's branched out to all sorts of stuff. Uh, oh, you've seen half of the stuff featured on the channel. I don't really do a lot with other people's guns. Pretty much everything I feature on the channel is guns that are in my arms library because I just think gun design is super fucking cool. Humanity has found a million different ways to spit a projectile out of a rifled tube, and I just wanna figure out every way that they've done that, because that is, you know, that's the shit that lights my fire, man. And if you like gunsmithing and weapons design too, I gotta give a shout out, main channel sponsor, SDI, Snor and Desert Institute. Great place to get your start. If you feel like checking them out, links are in the description and in the pinned comment. Great sponsor of ours. This is 7.62 by 39. This is the caliber that you typically chamber an AK in, or that the AK is known for, rather. This is 7.62 NATO, or 308. This is a heavier cartridge, uh, more of a battle rifle cartridge. This is what the United States uses in things like the AR-10 platform. Uh, you know, the FAL is chambered in this, and also, you know, things like the M60, the 240 Bravo, some of our, you know, light machine guns and things. Moving up from here is the caliber that you associate with the Dragunov, or the Mosin Nagant the 7.62 by 54R, or rimmed. This is like your Mosin Nagants, your, your SVD, Dragunov, uh, some AK variants like the PSL are, are chambered in this, and also your PKM, the, the Soviet light machine gun. And this is 30-06, so as you can tell, just a little bit longer. 
So depending on how you measure it, this is the biggest cartridge the AK has been chambered in commercially or, you know, for any sort of production, like military production or anything. Uh, some people said that the M76 was because it was an 8mm Mauser. The 30-06 is actually longer than 8mm Mauser, so I'm giving the edge to 30-06, although 8mm is fatter because, you know, 7.62mm versus 8mm. Like, 8mm has a little bit of a diameter advantage, but we're kind of splitting hairs on that. So now for disassembly. Pretty much like an AK, just push our little recoil spring in. You get our dust cover here. Recoil spring assembly comes out. Get our bolt carrier group here, which comes out like so. There is something kind of neat about this bolt, which is why I'm showing it to you. Basically, you've fully disassembled the gun for, for field strip. But the thing I wanted to point out on this bolt is, first of all, that's heckin' large diameter bolt there. You see on the back here, where we've got our typical two AK lugs. So we've got our lug here and our lug here, uh, just like every other AK variant. Well, we actually have a third lug there down on the bottom. That is because with the increased pressure on the 30-06, they decided to add another lug for support. So in our front trunnion here, yes, angry cop side. I am saying trunnion, goddammit. Well, first of all, we have our bulge trunnion, so we've already got our thicker receiver, which is common on the Vepers, uh, but we have our regular locking lug here, our locking lug up here, and down here, there. I don't know if the camera can see it or not. Uh, that is our third lug for when the bolt goes into battery and locks into place preventing the gun from exploding until the bolt carrier begins the cycle thanks to the gas pressure and unlocks the gun and cycles it. Uh, we can also take off our gas tube by pulling up on our gas tube lever and that is stiff. So I'm gonna show you a trick, AK daddy moment. If you ever have a stuck gas tube lever like that and you need a little bit of help getting it out, you take the rail, you can take the rail of your bolt carrier here and that little groove here that rides in the receiver, you can put that right in the little ear here and use this as kind of like a tool and lever it up like so. Get that up out of there. Now we will liberate our gas tube. This is also where we can take off our adjustable gas block here. As you can see, we've got different gas settings with their corresponding bleed off here on the other side. This is kind of a nifty feature because there is quite a lot of variation on the 30-06 ammo from modern ammunition to like 30-06 Garand, M1 Garand rated ammunition, which is interesting because the M1 Garand really is the grandfather of the AK platform. And that's not conjecture. Mikhail Kalashnikov said it in his own words. The Grand was a huge inspiration for the AK. A lot of people who don't know any better point at the STG-44 and say, oh, it's an AK. The Kalashnikov, you know, Kalashnikov obviously just copied Schmeisser's homework. While the STG-44 was an, a huge inspiration for the concept of an assault rifle in general, and does share some similarities with the AK, the AK in operation has much more in common with an M1 Garand. Maybe not in appearances, but I'll take one apart here in a second and we'll, we'll go through it together. But first, once I get this thing put back together, this is a 30 out six. You know, this isn't your typical close quarters kind of caliber. So, you know what? We've got a little bit of distance we can get this to, so let's see how she does with a little bit of range. So down there, we've got a couple of red, white, and blue silhouette targets. I'm going to see how the 30-06 Vepper does against that, and maybe we'll move even to the uh, the little red swinger there. So I'm going to keep this on the 100-yard setting, or meter, for those of you who've never been to the moon. All right, I'm going to go for that uh, left red silhouette. Yep, not too bad. These iron sights leave a little bit... They leave a little to be desired but they do have a pretty good sight radius, which is nice for uh, for longer distance shot. Meaning that the distance between, for those of you who, who don't know what that means, the distance between the rear sight and the front sight is a little bit further than normal, meaning it's a little bit better for longer range engagements. Because if your sight radius is really short, there's a lot of variables there, like you changing the angle of that even so slightly will throw off the shot by a lot. But when you have a longer sight radius, that's really not as much of a problem, so. You know, that part's nice, but let's see if we can uh, keep making hits. I'm gonna go for the blue one now to the right. Gonna hit him again. 
let's go for that little red swinger, the, uh, the circular plate. Whoops. So I thought this was my fault, but now that I look, I think I hit here on the left side because this is painted over where this impact was. So I think we're safe. I didn't break match shit today. There we go. Yeah, honestly, for uh, for irons, I mean, these are really just st standard Vepper irons. They're nothing special. Uh, it's not too bad. I mean, it's, it's still 30-06 recoil, but it's not really beating me around too much, which is kind of nice. Especially since we don't really have a muzzle brake on it, just more of a uh, flash hider. So uh, with that in mind, yeah, the recoil is uh, honestly kind of impressive. I'm, I'm surprised. This is an M1 Garand. God, I love that noise. Now on the surface, this doesn't look like an AK at all. But when it comes to the gas system, I'm gonna show you exactly why this was Kalashnikov's inspiration, which is why looping this back around to the 30-06 Vepper, it is so cool. <laughs> I'll, I'll get to that. Anyhow, flipping this upside down, we're just going to take this Garand apart real quick. Pull our stock off here. And we have the action of the gun. So something that we didn't need to take it apart for, but I'll show you right here at the top, you can see the locking mechanism of the M1 Garand is a two lug rotating bolt. This is very much how the AK operates. We have a partially disassembled AK here. So when the gun cycles, it has to unlock the same two lug bolt. So if you look through the bottom of the mag well here, you see that same two lug bolt system rotating back into the trunnion, just the same way that the Grand does. The Grand also operates on a long stroke gas piston. So now that we have removed the furniture, you can see here the recoil spring going through the gas piston. That seems familiar. So our bolt carrier gas piston here, and this goes all the way out to our gas block where the gas is tapped directly from the gun, from the barrel, excuse me, and is used to then operate the gun. Even the entire cam group, everything, you could definitely see where uh, Mikhail Kalashnikov saw this and thought, well, shrinking that down into an assault rifle is probably not a bad idea. I've already basically done this exact same video in depth uh, at Drive Tanks a couple years ago, so I don't wanna go too autistically down that rabbit hole. But if you did wanna watch that video at some point uh, and see me younger, about 20 pounds lighter and still full of childish vigor, uh, you can see that video somewhere up, up there. I think that was the trip I got COVID for the first time. Anyway, like I was saying earlier, one of the reasons I think that 30-06 AK is so cool is because it is the AK platform coming full circle from an American combat rifle designed by a Canadian all the way over to a Russian assault rifle designed by well, a Russian going on to become the most iconic assault rifle of all time, arguably, and not arguably the most widely produced, just to at some point come all the way back to being a 30-06 semi-automatic rifle is, come on, that's kind of funny. It's kind of cool. Because in a way, even though they're basically 70 years apart, it, it's kind of the same picture. Isn't gun design fucking neat? Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Vepper 30-06. If you like this video and you really love this gun, you decided you want to try to find one for yourself, Good luck and may the odds be ever in your favor. Now, I think it's kind of neat. Uh, I love getting back to the AK roots of this channel and showing you cool and exotic different AK variants that you maybe haven't heard of. I know I've been looking for one of these for a very long time, so it's kind of cool to finally have one in the ever-growing arms library slash collection. But most importantly, it was an honor and a pleasure to be able to share it with you. So thank you guys so much for watching. I know you're subscribed to the channel. If you're watching this far, you're subscribed. I mean, who wouldn't be? literally any sane human, but whatever. Big thanks again to Matt from Demolition Ranch for allowing us to break it, uh, borrow his range. Stay tuned for that Sturmgewehr video coming up. I appreciate you guys watching all the way to the end. And as always, I will see you sexy YouTube mother lovers in the next video. The grandfather of the egg. It's upside down. ADD break.
Well, no, look at the eagle. <laughs> if you think government sanctions suck big pee pee, be sure to subscribe because we do too. All of my homies hate the government. I'm what? sorry. That was phrased as though all of your friends suck big pee pee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cut. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.